Well, hello and welcome to the Wimbledon Evening Show presented by Jaguar. I'm going to be with you each and every day throughout the championship to bring you some electrifying moments from that day's play. We'll also be bringing you up to speed on the action still to come and teasing all the best bits on what's always a memorable fortnight here at the All England Club. And some of those memories will be brought to you from this location behind me, the iconic Centre Court. Centre Court, a rectangle of grass right at the heart. The place where it starts. What a contest! Measured 78 by 36, 100 years. One net, two sticks. Simple lawn, unadorned but revered and adored. That is so good. A living surface marked in chalk and lime, grass roots stretching through 100 years of time. As players emerge, quiet please, pauses, applause, the pop of the strings and all eyes on the court where champions are born and historic tales told. next 100 years about to unfold the stage awaits Well, what a landmark then, celebrating 100 years of stories here at the All England Club. And we're very much underway with a new chapter this year already. And something which hasn't been here for two years is the iconic Wimbledon queue. And we thought we'd take a walk down there and have a chat to some very committed tennis fans and see exactly what brings them back year on year. I arrived on Friday at 11 p.m. I came from the U.S. and I'm here for the whole two weeks. I'm Doug Verbina and I'm number four in the queue and I arrived Saturday morning at six o'clock. I've been coming for, to Wimbledon for about 23 years now. Ever since I was a kid, I used to watch Wimbledon on TV, you know, the Connors and the McEnroe's and it was just a fascination. I did the queue back in 2019 and I came four days early and I was not the first person in the queue. I was number 60 something. And I was like, oh shoot, the next time I'm coming, I'm gonna come early again and then hopefully I'll be first. And it just worked out that way. You walk up and down here and there's such a, a friendly atmosphere and people are enjoying themselves and it's just a, a good time. You know, it's, it's nice to have that. When the match is finished on day one, I, I intend to come back to the queue and keep coming again and again. I'd like to see Nadal do very well again, go deep. But you know, also a lot of the younger players, you know, the Cam Norris and the Alcarezes and, and a lot of the, you know, the, the young female players too. And, you know, Simona Halep, you got a soft spot for her. Djokovic is one of the legends, so I want to see him at Wimbledon. Tennis right now on both the men and women's side is just what an exciting time. Well, Wimbledon just isn't Wimbledon without the fans. It's so great to see them back in full force for this year's championship. And if you're here on day one, well, you're pretty lucky because you're treated to action on every single court. There's just so much to keep you entertained. And if you missed it, don't worry, we've got you covered. Here are all the best shots from day one. Spectacular movement. Yes, it sat up nicely for him, but he deserved the luck. Terrific movement from Cam Norris. So impressive. It's really nice. 
nice variation. Power and then the touch and then the winner. Well, that might be his best four end of the day. It was a small target, but he found it. What a wonderful pass. It will be a second time break of the day. What a shot from Ramos Vinulas. Able to get himself behind the ball there. <laughs> well executed drop shot. It's an entertaining player to watch because of the variety in her game. And we just saw it there. Oh! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that is a ridiculous shot. How the heck did he get that? How low hit that shot? Look at this, it's just raw Spanish speed, and then the racket work. Oh. oh! Put that on the showreel for the end of the first day. That was lovely. 13, 15. Oh, what a stroke. That is absolutely exquisite. 15, 13. Oh, nicely struck. Put down your first love hold. Oh, that's exceptional. Not just the pass, but the work he put in to stay in the point. 15, Great industry. Great agility from Harrison. That is a beauty. So let's kick off today's review with the first matchup on centre court. Circle for Novak. Yes, it. It. A, it wasn't without some six, difficulty. Six, 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 number 15 closes out a four set victory. Djokovic is back. Well, second on to centre court and making her debut on that court was British hopeful Emma Raducanu. She was up against Alison van Ertvank and Emma Raducanu came out on top in the end, 6-4, 6-4. What a start to her 2022 campaign. Yeah, a mouth. Emma Raducanu impresses on her centre court debut. And following Raducanu onto centre court was another British hopeful, this time in the form of Andy Murray, who was up against Australian James Duckworth. He received an awesome reception as he walked onto court and ended up with a very entertaining victory for the home fans. And one more Andy Murray win to add to the century of centre court stories. Two women who were expected to go through on day one did just so as a second and third seed respectively. Annette Kontovic and Ons Jabur made light work of their first round opponents. Game set match. Ons Jabur makes short work of it. Let's turn our attention to the men's side of things now. And it was Roland Garros finalist, Kasper Ruud. He went through to round two, as did Carlos Alcaraz. But it did take him five sets in the end. 
But it wasn't to be for last year's semi-finalist here at the All England Club, Herbert Hercatch. He had a premature end to his 2022 campaign. <laughs> Wimbledon is about more than just tennis. It attracts fans from all over the world. And we caught up with one who's out of this world. Well, my mum is a huge tennis fan, so first memories of Centre Court TV on, um, looking at the green grass of Centre Court, uh, watching uh, Bjorn Borg, John McEnroe, uh, Jimmy Connors kind of thrashing it out and uh, just loving those, those uh, watching the tournament. As I've grown up, of course, I've had the opportunity to actually come here in person and uh, also watch the greats play at the championships too. It is iconic. Um, of all the Grand Slams, I mean, there's something incredibly special about Wimbledon. It's the atmosphere, to be able to walk around and to see the match going around Centre Court as well. I think that's very special. It's, it's very British. It keeps up and maintains those traditions. So I think it has a very special place in people's hearts. Well, really, the legacy of my mission that I'm really proud of is, is the effect it's had on young people because we managed to reach over two million school children throughout the education projects we did. Much like when you come and, and watch the, the tennis, I mean, you get inspired by people doing amazing things and that raises aspirations. And I think if our younger generations can raise their aspirations today, then that can only be a good thing for the future. Right, well, it's time now to look forward to day two with Radzi Chingyanganya. Radzi, thanks for joining us. I mean, what a day we've had already. But the storyline on day two is Serena Williams being back here. No one particularly expected it. She hasn't played a singles match since Wimbledon first round last year. What are your thoughts on her being here? Well, fun enough, this is serendipitous. We were basically stood on this spot when we found out she was exiting Wimbledon. But in terms of the men's and women's game, no one's dominated like Serena Williams. You have a top three in the men's. Murray had that to the equation before. But Serena, this is like the return of Usain Bolt. It's like the return of Tiger Woods. This is absolutely colossal and she's doing it tomorrow. Well, she has returned and her preparations this year have been a little different to usual. In case you're wondering how do I prep for Wimbledon, right? Um, well, I relax my mind by doing Legos, Thor's hammer. I mean, the movie's coming out, so want to be on brand. I just started building it, so it's coming right along. Well, let's have a look then and see who she's facing. Harmony Tan on centre court, of course, third up tomorrow. How do you think she'll get on? I'm going to put it out there. I think Serena goes past Tan. I think she goes all the way to the final and wins. And that's because I love a fairy tale, in sport especially. Then she'll get the magic 24th slam and then she will be the greatest player. She's only played two matches of doubles though. She's Serena Williams. Anything is possible. She's also 40 years old. She's also had a kid. She's also not had the best preparation for this. But I just think when it comes to Serena, I mean, could you imagine that headline? Serena gets the 24th. It would be incredible. Is my heart leaving my brain? Absolutely, but I'm going for Serena. Well, someone who will be standing in her way or trying to stand in her way is Iga Sviantec. Of course, world number one. She'll be opening up proceedings tomorrow on centre court. Quite the story, isn't it? OK, three words. Wow, wow, wow. How she's done what she's done in a game like tennis, where you ebb and you flow. You go into tournaments, you come back out of them. There's no shame in that. You quarterfinal, you semifinal. She just hasn't. And she's found the formula for winning. The big question, can she do it? on the grass. I would love to say yes. Not quite like Serena, but she's just, she's a winner. She's on this 35 match winning streak. She's up against Jana Fett. How will Jana Fett be feeling? Okay, here's one big question. When someone keeps winning, it's what happens when you add jeopardy to the mix? Because all of a sudden, you know, winning becomes an easy thing. But can that question mark, can you add that seed of doubt into her brain? And if she can do that, then anything's possible. But I still think it's all about eager. OK, well, let's move on then to Iga's opponent at Roland Garros, Coco Goff, finalist there. She's back. She's obviously on a great momentum as well, Radzi. What are her chances like? Well, let's not forget she's 18 years old. We talk about Emirati Kanu as being very young. 19. Eight, 
precisely when I was 18, and she's just 18, 18 in March. When I was 18, I was basically playing TIG on a playground. Coco Goff is making Grand Slam finals. She's got a maturity of someone so much older than that. So the future's bright. The question for me isn't when she wins, it's will it be this year? It really is, I don't think it'll be this year. I think she'll get more experience. I think she'll go deep into the competition and once again show us that she really is a star of the future. Well, she's obviously loving life here at SW19. She's also loving life in the capital. We caught up with her ahead of her first round matchup. It feels really great. Just being back in, in London and, and, and in the UK in general has been really nice. And Wimbledon in particular, I think it's just the one, I would say the prettiest tournament to ever exist in tennis. And coming here, it just, you just feel so happy to play. I mean, I'm always happy to play, but a little, a little extra here. <laughs> I mean, center court, I think it's just so pretty. And walking on the court, I don't know, just like Wimbledon, it, it kind of, I feel like the crowd gets the quietest here. People are shouting, and then when you start to bounce the ball, you can literally hear like the, a pin drop. And I think only center court has that vibe, really. At, at least of all the courts I've played on, I've never seen the crowd get so quiet um, right before you're about to serve which makes you nervous a little bit, <laughs> or makes me nervous. <laughs> and I think only I have one loss there so far, so hopefully you can stay like that. <laughs> well, 17 Brits started day one. Paul Jubb is in action on day two against Nick Kyrgios, a tricky opponent. How will he face going up against him? I'm torn. On the one hand, I love being British and I will cheer on any Brit. On the other hand, Nick Kyrgios, what a man. What a player, what a character, and you never know what you're going to get from Nick Kyrgios, whether it's crowd shouting like we just saw there, whether it's him shouting, whether it's rackets getting broken, you don't know what to expect. So you're playing not only a player, but you're kind of playing a personality as well. Well, talking of Kyrgios and his personality, we caught up with him ahead of his first round. So I know that I've just got to ride the waves um, emotionally out there because the crowd's obviously going to be behind the, the local. and. Um, I'm used to wearing that kind of black hat, the villain type role, so I'm going to embrace it and I'm just going to go out there and play the game. Well, we can't preview tomorrow and not talk about one man, Rafa Nadal. He's back here as Incredible. well. Incredible. What a man he is. And the calendar slam which he's going for, for me, there are a few things about Rafa that makes him unlike anybody else. The number of grand slams we know about, but the way in which he won, won as a youngster he had intestinal fortitude. He wore players down. Yet still that man has had the longevity of a guy who plays efficiently, like a Federer. He's also come back from incredible injuries. He's had stem cells in his knees. He wasn't able to move the same way a few years ago, yet he's back. And I would argue he's possibly better than ever. And that is scary for every single opponent he faces. So much action happening on day two, of course. Rafa Nadal, Serena Williams, Iga Sviantec. We cannot wait. Rads, thank you so much for previewing day two with me. My and pleasure. Guys, thank you so much for watching as well. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. <laughs>